Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving leap code problem 1448, count good nodes in a binary tree. Let's read the question prompt. Given a binary tree root, a node x in the tree is named good if in the path from root to x there are no nodes with a value greater than x. Return the number of good nodes in the binary tree. So, for example, let's look at this tree here. What would be the number of good nodes in the binary tree? Well, we start at the root, and obviously at the root we haven't seen any nodes with a value greater than x. So therefore, um, you know, we have one good node at the root. Then, you know, we have to go into its left and its right subtrees. So let's go into the left subtree, and we go into this node 1. Obviously, we've seen the node with value 3 here, so that means that, you know, along this path, there is a, a node that is greater than the current node's value. So this is not a good node. Then we go into the 3, and we notice that, okay, we've seen a 3, but it tells us that, you know, it's only good if it's, um, you know, greater than x. So therefore, 3 is actually a good node, because we haven't seen anything that has a value greater than 3. So we have another good node here. So this is our, you know, first path through the tree. Now, what's our other path through the tree? Well, you know, we go into, you know, the four now and, you know, is this a good node? Yes, it is, because there's no value on this path so far that has a value greater than four. So four is a good node. Now we go to the left, right? So this is this path at one. Is there a node in the tree with a greater value than one? Yes, both three and four on this path have a value greater than one. Therefore, this is not a good node. Now let's go to the five. This is our last path in the tree. And is five a good node? Yes, because there's no node on this path whose value is greater than five. So that means that we have a good node here. So our total good nodes in this tree is going to be four. So essentially what we wanna do is we wanna do a depth first search through our tree, and we want to explore all possible paths in our tree and along each path, we want to keep track of the maximum value that we've seen on that path. And if the current node value that we're visiting is less than or equal to the maximum that we've seen on the path, then we can increment our total count of good nodes in the binary tree by one. Otherwise, we simply continue. And every time uh, we visit a node, we also want to update our maximum seen, which will be the maximum of the current node's value and the maximum that we've seen so far on that path. We're going to explore every path in the binary search, uh, this isn't a binary search tree, sorry, in the binary tree in a pre-order manner because we have to process the current node before going to its left and its right subtrees because we would need to update our maximum value so that our children have access to that maximum when computing their, um, whether or not they're a, a good node or not. So we have to do it in a pre-order manner and that's going to be the algorithm that we want to use for this problem. Let's go over to the code editor and we can see how we're going to implement this in actual code. I'll see you there. Okay, we're back in the editor. Now let's write the code. The first thing that we want to do is make sure that we're actually given a root. If we're not, obviously, if the root is empty, we don't have a tree and therefore there are no good nodes for us to count. So we should simply return zero. So let's do that. So we'll say if not root, we want to be returning uh, zero. Now we need to set up a variable to track the number of good nodes. And we'll be incrementing this every time we find a good node. So we're gonna say self.goodNodes is gonna be equal to zero because we haven't seen any so far. Now, remember that we said we're gonna solve this problem using a pre-order depth first search to explore all the possible paths in the tree. So let's call our DFS function to do that work. And we'll define the function in a second. And we'll pass in the root and also the maximum value that we've seen so far. Now we come to the point of, okay, well, what are we setting as the maximum value that we've seen so far? Well, this is going to be problem specific. If we look at the constraints for the problem, we can see that each node's value is going to be between minus 10 to the fourth and 10 to the fourth. So we want to set our value outside of this range as to not interfere with any nodes we might see in the tree. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to set the maximum value that we've seen so far to be minus... 10,001. And the reason that we do that um, is because obviously if we set it within this range, then that would 
you know incorrectly um give us a value and we might ignore nodes that we shouldn't be and we set it to negative because obviously if we did positive you know that would be greater than any node we can see in the tree therefore we would never find a good node so we want to set it to negative um 10,001 because this is outside of our range and you know typically when we're looking for maximums we set you know the the maximum that we've seen so far to like the smallest possible number and then if we're looking to the minimum uh we set it to the maximum possible number because right obviously if we set it the opposite direction then nothing would ever be smaller than the smallest possible integer or nothing would ever be greater than the greatest possible integer so you do it flip that way anyway let's now continue <clears throat> and after we you know we do our dfs we're simply going to return the good nodes that we found now we need to actually define the function to do our pre-order traversal of the tree so we're going to say def dfs and this is going to take self it's going to take a node and it's going to take the maximum scene on the path so far so what do we need to do if we have if we are you know at the end so basically we have exhausted you know we've been to a leaf and we try to go into its left and right children where that you know um child doesn't exist then we have exhausted that path and there's nothing more for us to do we found all the you know good nodes that we could so we can simply return and end our recursion so we're going to say if not node so if we're at an, a null node we're simply just going to return we're not going to do anything otherwise what we want to do is we want to say if the current nodes value is greater than or equal to the maximum seen then that means that we have found a good node because if you remember a good node is um you know where there's no nodes with a value greater than x so if the current nodes value is greater than anything we've seen so far then that means that this node is good and then if it's smaller than the maximum we've seen that means that there's a node greater than it in the path therefore it's not a good node so if this is true node.val is greater than max scene we can simply say self.good nodes plus equals to one and then we want to also update the max scene because now we've seen a greater value or it actually could potentially just be equal in which case this max scene won't actually get updated because you know max of two numbers that are the same is just going to end up in the same number so we update our maximum scene and now because it's a pre-order traversal you know we've we've currently processed the node now we go into its left and right children so we'll say self.dfs and we're going to go into the left subtree and then we're going to pass it the max scene on that path and we're going to go into the right subtree and we're going to pass the maximum scene so far so that's all we need to do let's submit this and make sure that it works and we can see that it does okay before we go let's touch on the time and space complexity so for the time complexity we're doing a pre-order traversal through this tree which means that we're going to have to touch every single node in the tree right we're going to be testing all possible paths so that means that our solution is going to be big o of n right it depends on the size of the tree and we're going to be touching every single node as part of our traversal so that's why the time complexity is going to be big o of n the space complexity if we're not counting the recursive stack frames then we have not defined any new variables here right we have good nodes but this is you know a constant space allocation so we can say that our space complexity would be big o of one if not counting uh recursive stack frames otherwise it's going to be big o of n if we're counting the recursive stack frames and this would be the worst case where the tree is extremely skewed so think of it having like only left children or only right children in which case we would have to go all the way down to the bottom and then we'd have like a really large um you know recursive stack frame uh for that invocation of the dfs function so that would be our time and space complexity and that's how you solve this problem pretty straightforward just you know a standard pre-order traversal um where you just need to figure out what you need to do um, for the processing of each node not too complicated and so yeah, that's how you solve this problem. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you wanna see any other videos. Just leave it in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you and make that video for you. So otherwise, have a nice day and happy coding.